Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you guys very much for joining me for this tarot read. Uh, I hope your guys' new year is off to an uh, absolutely great start, guys. I uh, got a good feeling about 2023. It's going to be a great year for all of us here with the collective. Uh, somebody was letting me know in the comments. Uh, they're seeing uh, for their totem animals. I think they said crows and cats. I don't have crows in the deck, but I do have raven. So I pulled the raven card. Uh, raven in this deck represents shaman. So it says you are the creator and magician. Use your gifts for good. There is power in your wisdom and words. Connect with the elemental spirits and glide through the void. Claim your place as keeper of the mysteries. Birds are always messengers, guys, too. I, I keep feeling like there's a very strong message in this card uh, to trust your intuition and to listen to it and to exercise it. Uh, if you're seeing a lot of crows, too, uh, or ravens, those birds sort of flying around, I will tell you, too, especially with ravens, in Nordic mythology, uh, Odin, the all-father, he had two ravens at his side. It was Hun Hunan and Munin, and uh, they were kind of his eyes and ears, bringing him messages and letting him know so things that he couldn't see, they would see it and bring the information back. So you may notice these birds hanging around, uh, looking back in your life as almost like a prelude to change too. That, so that'd be something to keep in mind if you see these guys kind of hanging around or there's something odd about it. And then later, not too far down the road, you wind up with some sort of a big change in your life. And this is a consistent pattern. They're definitely your spirit guys and they're definitely your totem animals. And they are something to watch out for in the future. Uh, alrighty guys. And I did have a green eye Gemini. You were talking about a couple of different kinds of crystals. Uh, I think red and yellow. There's lots of different kinds. If you can find out what kind they are, post it in the comments and I'll bring the cards forward for you uh, in my next read. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and get going. Um, so we're gonna work with this deck today. This was the one that was calling to me. It's the one <laughs> that got chosen. Then as I started touching it here, I actually got told the word shadows and I got pulled to a different deck. Um, so we're gonna start I think we're still going to use that one, but I think Spirit wants me to start with the shadow deck. Uh, so we're going to see, I don't know if this is, has to do with your shadows or the shadows of an energy around you. So what's going on with the collective in the shadow deck? Why is this coming forward? Huh, entitled shadow, you owe me attitude, self-centered, unrealistic expectations. Ah, that's interesting. Um, keep feeling like somebody just expects you to do stuff. Somebody just expects it of you. Uh, I don't know if you got into kind of this pattern with someone or maybe a few people uh, where you're sort of putting out and you're doing the work. And now it's just like coming, someone kind of just expects it to happen. And so if you don't, it's kind of like, I don't know if it comes up as an issue. And I keep feeling, I gotta tell you, I get a really snotty ad attitude energy off of this card. So whoever this is who you're dealing with, who has this entitled shadow, this person's, I just keep feeling like this is person, and they're not a whole lot of fun to be around. Slowness, postpones decisions or active actions, tentative, unsure, or slow in acting. Huh. I don't know. I feel softer. These energies are two different people, it feels like to me. This feels like a much softer energy. Especially with it being slowness. I just keep feeling like this is somebody who who is a little bit more shut down, unwilling to make changes, unwilling to, to try and make changes in their life. These just feel too, they feel different. Why do they feel so different? And the rusher rushes into things. See, so look at that. We got like complete opposites right here. The slowness shadow and the rusher shadow. Somebody who rushes in, somebody who's impatient, impatient, impulsive, uh, makes rash decisions. Regret, regrets them later. Hmm, what is this all about? Uh, yeah, this is weird. I gotta pull some more here because I want to know and I keep getting told the word shadows too. So we need to grab more of these cards. Spirit, can you please tell me what's going on with these shadow cards? Who are these people with the collective? Who are they dealing with? What is going on here? Maybe I will line these all up. We might wind up with a full roll of these guys yet. These are the ones I'm most interested in because they came flying out volatile shadow yeah i could feel that when somebody didn't get their way or they weren't being catered to they get super pissed off i could feel that i could feel somebody acting out acting out because they didn't get what they wanted it doesn't feel like this one though 
This one feels really subdued. I got to tell you, this energy feels completely different from this energy. This one I know is tied to this one and this one. It's, it's somebody who's just really rash and impulsive. And it's somebody who wants what they want when they want it. And they just expect everybody to cater to them. Traditional shadow. Yeah, this one ties to this one too. This is somebody who's used to something probably like gender roles. Uh, like back in the day uh, where, where a man or a woman would kind of cater to a man or something. There's something very traditional here that this person, this is part of their entitlement to. This ties back into how this person was raised and their idea of the way that things are supposed to be. They just have this idea in their head. This is the way the world works. This is the way relationships work that I do this and you do that and I shouldn't have to give you any more. I shouldn't have to step up or it shouldn't be a, this person doesn't want equal give and take. I can tell you that their idea of equal is completely different than your idea of equal. I keep getting that vibe completely different. Rebellious shadow. I'll tell you what I feel in this. This is somebody who's dealing with this, this energy. This is somebody who marches to the beat of their own drum. This is somebody who's extremely independent. This person does not need to live this traditional life. And in fact, they would find whatever this traditional idea is that somebody has, and I'm saying traditional, they would find it extremely stifling. It would be like crushing their soul and crushing their spirit. It would feel like, it would feel like oppression. That's the vibe that I keep getting that it feels like oppression. Somebody trying to like tell them what to do. Because I keep feeling like one person feels like they should be the boss. They should be the boss of everything. They should dictate how it goes. That's where you fit. I was wondering where she fit in and where this energy fit in here that was coming from this card that was really soft. This is what they want. Or this is what they're trying to make you into. They're trying to make you into this meek little thing who just does what they're told. That's where it fits in. I was trying to figure out because it was so, so bloody different, the energy that came off of that card from everything else that was coming forward. That's what they want. They want this, this little kept person at home. Or maybe they want you to work and pay the bills too. But they want you to keep your mouth shut and just do what you're told. That's what I keep getting from the cards. That they want to be in charge. They want to call the shots. This person has a hot temper. They're very controlling. They're very oppressive. They believe that they're, it's like their way or the highway. They're right and everybody else is wrong. I would not be surprised if this person has a lot of problems getting along with other people. This is somebody who strikes me as as being very pig-headed, stubborn, obnoxious, and most likely offensive. I can see this person offending a lot of people in the things that they say. And somebody is like, I don't want to be stifled. This is, this is not, this is not who someone is inside. This, this slowness, this real soft, meek energy. If this is you, or this is what they're wanting you to become, this is not who you are at your core. It is completely unnatural to you. And that's why I could feel in this card that this attitude that they're taking to try and make you into that feels extremely oppressive. Too open shadow. I feel like this ties into them too. I keep feeling like this person likes to run their mouth about stuff. Um, I think they try and run you down in front of other people too with words, making fun of you or trying to put you down, trying to, trying to really rip down your self-confidence because that's part of their, that's part of their really trying to knock you down and make you into this meek energy, trying to beat you down. And so you can't speak up for yourself or, or you feel like you can't speak up and you have to just do what they're told and you don't confide in others. It's like an isolating thing trying to isolate you so they can control you. This is not a very nice energy. I don't know who this is, who you were dealing with or maybe are dealing with. Not a nice energy at all. Save your shadow. Try to save or fix other people. You know what? That might be part of what's going on here. You might be trying to help this person out. You might see something deep down within this person where you're like, if this person changed, they could be wonderful. You know, you might have this view of who they could be. They, and I'll tell you, this is something that I 
think honestly a lot of us struggle with at times in relationships where some some of us sort of don't always choose our partners well it's like falling in love with somebody but you're falling in love with who you think they could be if they changed not who they actually are i keep feeling that here like who who this this figure is in love with is an image it's an image of who somebody could be if they could conquer all of their shadows but that's not who they are that person that vision does not exist that's in somebody's mind and i think somebody's just like i could just teach them if i can just show them how loving i am how smart i am how kind i am how i'm willing to step up and contribute and and be a loving partner and be trustworthy and and all these wonderful things this person will see they'll see me they'll see the light they'll change this one is really stuck in their way i don't know if this is exactly how they grew up but this person is very cemented they feel extremely cemented in their view hmm elusive shadow hmm i'll also tell you this too i don't feel like whoever this is is overly open with uh, their emotions in terms of saying i love you i appreciate you i respect you is it, that doesn't occur to this person and i also don't think it's something they would do at least while they're struggling with these shadows while they're choosing to live in in this kind of darkness this is not something that they would entertain doing because it would build somebody up their their whole thing is designed to tear somebody down into this meekness they want somebody in this quiet little meek energy so they're not going to give that praise freely they're not going to give their love freely they're not going to give their affection freely this is somebody who purposefully holds that goodness back and gives negativity instead because to this person is kind of part of this game that they're running it's kind of it's, it's like their mo it's like this person has an mo they did this before you showed up okay this wasn't something they invented when you came along because of something you did or something you said this is how they roll and i keep i keep getting this this distinct impression like this is just how somebody has decided that this is how the world is supposed to work their idea of things and their ideology is what's right and that's the way it should be and that's where i keep getting pulled to this traditional shadow and things like that are very hard to change once somebody has cemented in their mind that they're the one who understands how the world needs to work and everybody should conform obsessive shadow i'll tell you what i feel in this one too uh i feel jealousy and i feel suspicion i don't think whoever this entitled shadow is and that's the image that sticks out to me the most in this read for sort of representing that energy because it was the strongest in that card i don't think this person wants their partner to have connections with others because that risks this meekness that they're trying to grow right they want a submissive partner well if their partner goes out and their partner has friends and their partner has community and their partner has uh all of these self-esteem building things well shit, they're gonna start getting ideas and they're probably not gonna want to stand for that garbage anymore so they're trying to stifle that and part of that is this it's like this where did you go where were you who are you talking to this this really jealous is really jealous suspicious type attitude that makes you just not even want to talk to people because you know it's just going to be a big ass fight that's the point right that's the point because then you just withdraw from others then this person has you all to themselves and they can control what you hear with other people that was part of the plan here that's what they got going on here i just keep feeling like this is this is so against who you are this is so opposite of who you are this kind of attitude you, this this being submissive this is at your core this would never sit well with you this is not something you could ever live like that would not be fulfilling to you uh it it would just eventually you couldn't handle it anymore and that's why we got this rebellious shadow and i feel in that too like at this is like within somebody's core this is not me this is not who I am and we all have different personalities some people are a lot more quiet 
let's face it, some people are a lot more quiet and they're more than happy to be that way. And I'm not saying you're big and loud, but you are not this little meek energy. This is not who you are at your soul. I'm getting pulled back to this deck. I knew we were going to use this at some point today. So let's see. Spirit, can you please give us some more clarification on what's going on in this read here? Fed up, right? Fed up. That's what I was feeling like. Eventually, this was not something that you were going to be able to take forever. You can't live your life being oppressed this way. It just builds and builds and builds, and it's not something that you can live with. Mm, legal issues. So I'm not sure if this was maybe a marriage and there was maybe a divorce here. You guys were common law and had to sort of separate and go through things. Uh, I keep feeling like this is between uh, two people, between two people, uh, like you and them. Something that's having to get sorted out. And an offer. Oh, what are you all about an offer? I don't like the feel of that card. I'm going to pull more to ask for clarification, but I'll tell you right off the bat, I don't like the feel of that card. It doesn't feel right to me. It feels like there's, um, it feels like there's something I can't see in it. So something that's being purposefully hidden from me, which makes me think that whatever the offer is, it's not genuine or there's an ulterior motive behind it. So I'm going to grab some more here. Spirit, can you please give us more clarification? Uh, ego. This person has a big ego. They don't like saying I'm wrong or I'm sorry. They don't like saying that. Uh, this is somebody, I think this person pretty well always thinks they're right. This is someone who might think everybody else around them is an idiot, which may have landed them in trouble at work. You might have had to hear a million times how uh, the boss and all their coworkers are stupid and don't know anything. And this person is, they're just like the Jesus of whatever they do and they're so good at it and and they should be celebrated and they should this and that like they really they lay it on thick and I'll tell you they don't just lay it on thick they believe it they absolutely believe they are smarter than everybody else their ideology behind the way life is supposed to work they believe a hundred percent that that is the way it should be they actually do they're not just feeding some kind of line they genuinely believe this they have a very big ego. Marrying for money. Interesting. And clout hungry. Hmm. I gotta tell you. Make shit up is what stands out to me the most. And this person is like, this is, I get pulled back to two open shadow. And like trying to run you down in front of other people, maybe trying to make shit up, maybe trying to tell lies. Maybe on occasion you guys have gone out and you've had a drink and they make some comment when other people are around that makes you look like you're some kind of big alcoholic, even though you're not. Like this person just, they're not nice. They're not nice. And that's a, that's a bloody understatement is what I can feel from the cards saying that. Um, I don't know if there was a marriage here. This connection might have been... It might have been for money. It might have been out of out of convenience. I think they felt like you were, they had some sort of indication early on. In some way, shape, or form, in their mind, they thought that they could turn you into this. I don't know. Maybe their boldness in the beginning attracted you. And then after a while, it just stopped looking like confidence and it just started looking like arrogance. There was somewhere along the line where it changed. And it, it wasn't attractive anymore. And in fact, I feel like it was quite the opposite. It's when it all started crossing the line. Like I said, I could just almost hear them running their mouth to other people and making sure that they say it loud enough that you hear it or saying it right in front of you to try and hurt your confidence and to try and break you down. Spirit, can you please give me some more, please? Inside scoop. I don't know if you're at this point, if this is sort of a separation or if this is something you've done or been through in the past or sort of moving on from. Uh, I keep feeling someone looking, someone looking. If this person, if you've already stepped out of this, this person may be sort of keeping tabs on what you're up to in some way, shape or form, whether this is through, I don't know, social media 
uh, or through mutual acquaintances or if they make a point to try and frequent wherever you are. I kind of feel like this is someone who wouldn't want you to see them doing that. It would kind of be like quietly sitting in the car or, or hanging back and just sort of watching and observing. Um, it's like they're, they're checking to see if you got somebody else. It's so like this person is checking to see if you've moved on to another relationship. So I scoop wolf in sheep's clothing. That offer. I keep feeling something creepy behind that offer. And this wolf in, sheep's, wolf in sheep's clothing does not help that. What is going on with this spirit? I keep feeling something false. Uh, something false. It's tied to this shadow person. And it's like, I keep getting it's almost like designed to trip you up or designed to spy and to see what you're up to. I don't know if there's like people who were mutual acquaintances who maybe you didn't really talk to a whole big bunch. And after you guys have sort of stepped away from each other, after you've maybe moved past some of this. You found that some of these people now all of a sudden have a really deep interest in what's going on in your life. I would be cautious. I would be quite cautious because there's like, I don't like telling you guys shit like that. I don't like saying, oh, you know, beware somebody's creeping on you or make you real suspicious of other people because I don't feel like that's very healthy or a very kind thing to do. I do have to tell you what the cards are telling me though. Now what my guides are bringing forward. And there is some sort of a warning behind it. And it's somebody who's not what they seem. It has to do with this offer card. It has to do with a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I keep feeling like it's designed to have a look into your life and see where you're at and see what you're doing. So I would be cautious about perhaps talking too much about what you got going on in your life with people who you maybe aren't real close to or haven't been very close to for years, who may be a little bit more of a casual acquaintance. Hmm. Health issues. Hmm. There's something else in that though. I'm going to have to keep asking my guides because I don't feel it just yet, but I know that there's something else to that card tripping on you. Uh, this person is very hyper focused on you too. If the two of you have already separated or you're in separation, if this is someone you're moving away from, because this person's very obsessive and very controlling, they don't like that separation because it's like that loss of control over you. They don't like it. And that's why I keep getting this, these weird vibes like this offer wolf in sheep's clothing, looking in on your business they want to know where you're at. They want to know what you're up to. And I don't know if they're going to try and sneak their way back in or try and pull you back into another loop, but they're very hyper-focused on you. And I don't get a nice feeling off of this card either. I got to tell you that. And I'll be honest with you guys. Facts. Yeah, this is funny because this is part of what I was feeling too in, in the cards when I was feeling like this was somebody who would probably call everyone they work with an idiot. And act like they know everything and they know exactly what they're talking about all the time. I think they talk some shit. I think they make shit up as they go a lot of times and they just hope nobody catches them at it. Like how to do certain things or facts about what's going on in the world or what. I think they're like, they just make their own shit up. And not all the time, but this person is not half as smart as they claim to be or as they like to think. But I also feel like this ties into some of these other cards with, with the offer, with the tripping on you. They're obsessing about what's going on in your life. And I think because they're obsessing, they're starting to come up with their own facts. Their own facts. I don't know if they're freaking out about you moving on, freaking out about you, maybe starting a new relationship, uh, maybe getting a career, moving, whatever it is. They're freaking out about what you're doing, where you're at, and what's going on. Oh, okay. We're going to save this card because I'm going to show you this card and then I'm going to cover it up because it grosses me out. There's <clears throat> two cards in this deck. I got to tell you, it might sound silly, but I don't like looking at them. They give me a very gross feeling. Uh, as, a, as an empath, I get emotions and, and energies off of these cards. And so sometimes, depending on what comes forward, I really don't like looking at them because uh, the energy is too strong and it's too negative. 
This is one of them. It says bad karma. Okay, I'm covering this card up, but we know it's there. This person may be receiving bad karma. We do have this, this caught a case card that speaks of something going on, some sort of, uh, well, it speaks of STDs, but I'm not entirely sure it is STDs. It may just be health issues of some shape or form. Um, that's funny, but I don't feel health issues in it. Be cautious if this person comes back to you or somebody who's a mutual acquaintance comes back to you and tells you this person is having health issues. Because it might be a lie made up to draw you back into something. Because I see the card, I know what it represents, but it feels hollow. And to me, when I get that feeling from a card, it tells me that it's most likely a lie or a mask or something that somebody is using or pretending to be. And there's nothing behind it. It doesn't actually exist. I keep feeling like somebody might be faking somebody might be faking so be cautious about what others are telling you be cautious about the motives of this person or anybody tied to them because you do have someone who's trying to keep an eye on what you're doing it's either them or it's somebody who's doing it on be on their behalf yeah they are a grudge holder absolutely this person's a grudge holder that's part of their feeling like they're always right they hold on to grudges you know they lost their chance last chance i like i said this started as seeing who this person could be if they got there and and maybe it started as being attracted by their boldness right it seemed like confidence and then you saw okay there is there is kind of some ego in there but you thought you saw the good qualities too and you're like man if they could just do some changes we'd be good here i can love who this person can become but somewhere along the line you realize that just this was just arrogance this person was cemented in their thoughts they were cemented in their way of being and they were trying to completely change you and turn you into something that you were not take your power away take your strength away make you this meek little thing when really you're very strong you're extremely strong and i don't see that changing like i don't see this person coming back to you and something that they could say that would make you go, hmm, you know what? I think I'm going to give this another shot. I keep feeling like the damage is done here. Whatever has happened, the damage is done. Now, I think they seem, even in this, I keep thinking that they, they were very confident. They seemed very confident in the beginning. It was easy to be drawn in by their confidence. But it was arrogance. It wasn't confidence, it was arrogance. I do feel like you found that along the way. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, you're not going back. That's what I knew. You're not going back. Thank you. Next. Moving on. Thief. Hmm. I don't necessarily feel money thief in this card. I got to tell you, I feel like this card is very much tied to, I keep getting told the word lie or lies 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 um something they said to you well there's probably a bunch of somethings they said to you um i keep feeling lies i feel it tied to the life you were trying to build and the relationship so there was a lot of truth this person didn't tell you about what their intentions were what they wanted in a partner what they were willing to give to a partner where they were at i feel like they kind of gaslighted you a bit to try and get you in the door and get you hooked and then it was like bait and switch and then they kind of changed who they were and you're like oh wait a minute wait a minute this is not quite as shiny as i thought it was bad habits drugs addictions toxicities this person is absolutely toxic they are toxic they are a toxic connection to you they brought toxicity into your life I don't know if they're using drugs. I don't know if they're an addict, but they are absolutely toxic. Their anger is toxic. Their arrogance is toxic. Their controlling issues are toxic. Mm-hmm. And I keep feeling like they feel like their shit don't stink. This person still doesn't get they did anything wrong. That's the thing that really strikes me about this card and their attitude and even what they're doing now. 
this person does not feel like they did anything wrong. When it comes to the two of you, like, they don't get it. This person doesn't get it. This person is not, they are not ascending. I can tell you that at this point in time, that this tarot card is, this tarot read is speaking to, this person is not ascending in any way, shape or form. They are still deep within their shadows. I feel a lot of anger. I feel a lot of anger and a lot of focus on you. And it is anger focused on you about this separation, about you standing up for yourself, about you taking your power back. But then there's something else sneaky going on. And I want to know about that too. Uh, I'm getting pulled to this deck over here. So Spirit, can you please give us some clarification on what's going on in this read and the message for the collective? What is going on for the collective? What's happening here? That one, this one. Let's see. So we have the world. You know, that's funny because we did get that bad karma card. What I got told when I looked at this world card, I got told by my guides the words, what goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. Um, I think this person's got something coming. They don't see it coming. I don't feel like it really has to do with anything that you do or things that are particularly might be tied to you. This might have to do with situations they've created for themselves in other areas of their life because this nasty attitude just permeates everything. When it goes around, comes around. This person's getting a tower. I don't need to pull more cards to know that. This person is getting a tower of some sort and it is part of their karma for what they've set out into the world. So it does, it, it is the energy that they put into the relationship with you, the negativity. And all of that, that is, that is part of what drew in their karma too. But they treat other people like shit too. They just go through life. It's like building this karma. Building this karma, being nasty and nasty and nasty. And they're saying, put it on my tab. Put it on my tab. Uh, karma's coming, calling. Karma's calling in the tab. This person is going to have to pay in some way, shape, or form. Um, can I tell you what I see? Zero judgment, guys. Uh, you will be aware of whatever this tower is when it comes down on this person. I don't know if it already has or if it is going to. You are going to become aware of it. What I keep seeing in this card is the surprise <laughs> and somebody celebrating. I know that sounds absolutely terrible. And we're not supposed to celebrate other people's bad karma. This person kind of has something coming. I feel like it's almost like vindication. Like for how bad they treated you for how long. You're kind of like, there you go. Now you got yours. I keep feeling like this in the card. The Ten of Cups. And this may be part of you releasing some things as well and releasing maybe some anger of your own towards this person and what they put you through and what you've been through. This may be something that helps you to let that piece of things go and shows you there is that balance in the universe. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it comes about in a very roundabout way. I think it's the Wheel of Fortune. I feel it in the Wheel of Fortune too. The wheel is turning. The wheel is turning and I see balance coming back. So this person has something that's about to hit home. Interesting. And who are you? Queen of Wands. Even her I feel observing. I feel this in the cards sometimes. As somebody's energy observing what's going on. Uh, but I feel confidence in it. I... I keep feeling like this has got to be your energy. When you see what's going on, I know there's this feeling of vindication. Satisfaction is what I feel in here. Knowing that there's this balance and there's this justice in the universe. I see this satisfaction. But I also see that you are on your healing journey. And you are taking back control and leadership of your life. And that you're moving towards something better now. And you're building for yourself. The Eight of Cups is moving on and moving forward. It is letting go of the past, releasing. This, going through something like this with somebody is a hard thing to release. It's a hard thing to release when somebody does you dirty like this and somebody tries to control you and beat you down and, and really take away who you are. That is a hard thing to let go of. But I do feel like the karma that's coming about 
is going to help with that. I keep feeling this letting go feeling. This letting go like now it's okay to not be angry anymore because they got theirs. Because they got theirs. So now I don't have to be angry and I don't have to worry about is there justice out there in the world? Because I've seen that yes, there is justice. I can walk away from this piece of things. This person, I tell you, their energy is coming forward in this magician card too. Um, they're trying to manipulate they can't, this is what I'm being told by my guides. They cannot manipulate their way out of this. So this is part of the tower that's coming to them. Whatever it is, they can't talk their way out of it. Okay, they can't buy their way out of it. They can't emotionally manipulate their way out of it. They cannot find their way out of it. As they, whatever the karma is coming, they're stuck paying it. They're stuck paying their tab. There's no other way around it. Five of pentacles. So the five of pentacles can be going through a rough time financially or a period of ill health. I gotta tell you though, I still don't feel a lot of substance behind that caught a case card. I still don't feel it. I, I'm trying to get pulled back to it to get spirit to clarify it for me. Exactly what this five of pentacles is because it is tied to what they have going on. Um, that figure stands out to me so much. But it's like, it feels like one of their victims or somebody they victimized or somebody who they've treated poorly. I don't know if you guys have been apart for some time and perhaps they've had a relationship since. Uh, they might be running into legal issues over that. They might have gotten a little too aggressive with whoever they're with and they might have to deal with that with the law because i keep feeling like this is this is not your energy but this is somebody who's been victimized by them and it's like they're past catching up with them they cannot talk their way out of it they can't buy their way out of it they can't emotionally manipulate their way out of it they can't intimidate their way out of it it's like it's coming back it's like it's coming back on them. That's what I keep feeling in that card coming back on them. Seven of Wands. I see them like trying to like defend. Defend, defend against what's coming forward. Accusations perhaps that are coming forward from somebody they did legitimately do wrong to. Whoever that figure represents in that Five of Pentacles card, that person's telling the truth about what happened. Whatever they are saying, whatever accusation they're, make, they're making or saying that happened, that will bring this person's karma down on their head, is absolutely true. This person will try and lie their way out of it. They will get angry and try and bully their way out of it. They might try and buy their way out of it and intimidate that person to drop whatever it is. Because I see somebody who's desperate to defend. Desperate to defend in this card. And this will be them. Desperate to defend this. They don't want to have to deal Ooh, they might have to give a bunch of money to. They might have to give a bunch of money to this person. I see one way or another. They're paying their karmic debt. It's just like karma's like pay up. Pay up, right? Balance. To bring balance back, now you have to pay your karma. Five of cups. I see them feeling very sorry for themselves. I see them... I keep feeling empty, empty, empty. Uh, but it kind of... I tell you, it feels like empty pockets. It feels like it may even affect their home and living situation where perhaps they lose where they're living. I keep feeling like I have nothing. Looking at this card, I have nothing. I have nothing now. It's empty, empty. I have nothing. That's how this person's going to feel when karma comes and takes what's owed, that they have nothing left. Well, there's a funny one. That's not a vibe that I've gotten before or a message that I've gotten before with the strength card. A lot of times the strength card speaks about your inner strength. It talks about how strong you are, sort of taming that lion, right? Um, you're going to laugh at me, but I got to tell you what my guides are telling me and the impressions that I'm getting. This figure, and you can see her smiling because she's one up the lion. This figure is karma. This figure is karma. This figure is justice. This figure is the universe. Making this person pay up. 
that I have never gotten that message from that card before from my guides, you guys. But that's the one I got today. There is satisfaction, not just when you realize that there's balance and justice in the world, but the forces that enforce that are also feeling really satisfied in it as well. So I think this person had it coming. I don't know what they, what all of what they did to you. I can see what comes forward in the cards and I don't know what they did to that figure in the five of pentacles, but for a figure who is not human and be on the other side of the veil to be coming forward with that kind of satisfaction in that energy tells me this is not a very nice person who you've been dealing with and they really had this coming. They absolutely had this coming. The two of pentacles, even in the two of pentacles, I see brought it back into balance. Things have been evened out. Things have been balanced out now. Now the six of cups, they're past coming back. I could feel it in the five of pentacles, even though the five of pentacles does not represent that. I knew that's what it was. It's the past coming back. This may have had something to do with something they did. And I do feel like it's to a romantic partner. This would have been a romantic partner or someone of the opposite sex or they had that relationship with uh, or maybe a forced relationship. I don't know. But it's somebody who they did when you were not around. So this either happened before they met you and it's now coming back to bite them in the ass or this is after you guys parted ways and they did whatever this was. And that's the person in that. That's the figure in the five of pentacles card who's now coming back. That's who their victim is. Because it is a victim. Whoever that person is, it, they have been victimized by this person. And that's a big part of where that karma is coming down. Eight of Wands. And once this comes out, I tell you, once this, this figure in the Five of Pentacles comes forward here and all this shit plays out, I keep feeling like this is like swift change. This is just like, just all of a sudden everything's different for this person. Like their life just crumbles. This person's life just absolutely crumbles around them. It doesn't, I keep getting this lost everything, lost everything. So there might be a financial debt they wind up having to pay and they might lose all savings that they have, investments that they have, properties, assets. There might be one hell of a big loss here where they are quite literally left with the clothes on their backs. Because I keep getting that here, everything, lost, everything, empty, empty, like almost like an empty house or like an empty yard or an empty, like there's nothing there anymore. There used to be, you know, furniture and this and that. And there's just nothing. There's nothing there anymore. This person's got one hell of karma coming their way. And that's why it came forward in that really gross, bad karma card. Absolutely just despised. Uh, but it does do its part in the reads here. Nine of swords. See, worry. Lots of worry, tears, and a lot of tears too. I feel like this still weighs heavy on you. Like you still think about the things that happened in the past. I feel like there's still tears. There's still anger. And probably angry tears. I don't know if you feel like, man, I should have gotten out of there sooner. I should should have stood up for myself or I should have done this or I should have done that. I tell you guys, if you're feeling that, don't do that to yourself. That could have, should have, would have stuff. We don't have a time machine. I've said it before. As far as I know, they don't exist. You can't go back and change it. So beating yourself up about it does nobody any good, especially you. It just makes you feel like crap. Be kinder to yourself. You did the best that you knew how to do at the time. And when you knew better, you did better. And at the end of the day, I can see you chose a healing path and I can see you chose yourself and I could see that you were able to recognize this person for who they were and how toxic it was to you and you made a very difficult choice uh, to part ways with this. That you were able to start a new life. You were able to move on. That's not easy. Ooh, gross. This page of wands. I'm sorry, I got pulled back to the wolf in sheep's clothing and I got pulled back to spying. I got pulled back to spying. It's like this person wants to see if you're still upset. I don't know why we got pulled back to that. It's like they're wanting to see if you're still crying. They're wanting to see if you're still upset. And this page of wands is their, that is their energy. 
coming forward in this read, wanting to see what you're up to. Mm. Be cautious. Be cautious. If they got shit going on in their lives or news comes back to you about what's going on, I'll tell you this. Don't feel sorry for them. I hate to be that guy. Like, with being empathetic is good. But I have this worry of trying to make you feel sorry for them to try and draw you back in. So I keep feeling like this caution. I feel like there is an energy around you who is either them or somebody closely related to them in some shape or form who is not what they seem and who is trying to get into your life to see what you're up to and where you're at on their behalf. They are a toxic force. They are a grudge holder and they do have karma coming. Like I said, their past is about to bite them in the ass. Whoever they abused in their past, whoever they victimized, and that five of pentacles, that person's coming back to get them. Coming back to get them. Lost everything. It's funny. This is so funny because I kept getting told can't buy their way out. Even in this, I feel like somebody desperately trying to give money to make something go away. And it not working. But then at the same time, I feel like monetary loss here with this five of cups. And loss of assets. So maybe they try and make like a settlement to buy somebody off. Maybe that's part of that, that an offer, a dirty offer. Maybe that's what it is. It's just a dirty offer to try and get somebody to back off here. Just take this. Just take these four pentacles and just leave me alone. Because they don't want to face their karma. Well, karma wants more than four pentacles. That's not enough. And karma is going to take what karma wants. And that's the way it goes. There's no buying off of karma. That's interesting too. I keep feeling family in this card and it's tied to them. It's tied to them. I don't know if they come from a family who has money or if they have to borrow money from their family and go face their family. I will tell you, this is somebody who comes from a family uh, where if you show any kind of weakness, that's why we had the traditional shadow come forward. It makes sense that why they're so harsh too. This is a family where if you showed any kind of weakness, probably especially the males, oh, your life was like a living hell. Because whoever the patriarch would have been or whoever was in charge and had that, that masculine energy who kind of ran the family, man, they would treat you like a piece of dirt. Like, yeah, this might have been what made this person so damn hard and what sort of set this their ideas in motion here. I feel like they have to go crawling back and I feel so much judgment in the face of this figure of the Ten of Pentacles. I also feel like there's other family figures. So I feel like they get constantly compared to whoever else is in the family. And they are like the black sheep. They are like the piece of dirt. Especially when all of this comes forward. Oh man, those people don't like that. Those people don't want nothing to do with them. And I think they get greatly shamed. They're, that's interesting. That's interesting because I feel like your energy coming back here. Sitting back and watching this Queen of Cups. It's helping to release those emotions. There's justice in the world. I can let this piece of things go. I don't have to lose sleep over this. I don't have to shed tears over this anymore. And I also keep feeling in that is I don't have to think about this anymore. This doesn't have to come into my thoughts, into my heart, into my soul, into my mind anymore. I can bring this chapter finally to an end and release this last piece of things and move on. Really close the book on this. And the Knight of Cups. I feel ready to move on in this card too. It's funny because it represents sort of that emotional good news. A lot of the times are an emotional victory. But I keep feeling like ready for an emotional start. I'm ready for a new adventure. I'm ready to move out. I'm open to something new now because I was ready to bring this to an end. Ten of Swords. It is a disappointing ending. But one that benefits you in the long run. And I absolutely feel that in this card. And it does tie to this relationship coming to an end. And, and the closure on it. This person no longer being in your life. Or taking up space in your life. Taking up your energy. Messing with your heart. It is a blessing to have them removed from your life. Because they were toxicity. And they were a drain. And you deserve better than that. And they're still not willing to learn lessons. I'm sorry. In that I just see their mind is cemented here. Their mind is made up about what the truth is in this world. 
This person hasn't changed. This person's not in a place where they're going to change. Maybe somewhere long down the line, but not anytime soon. This person is just very much like they understand how the world works. And that's the way it is. And I do feel like this was something they learned from childhood and something they picked up. The King of Pentacles. They just want to have it all. They want to be in control. They want to be the king of the castle. And they want to have all the money. They want to have all the power. They want to control people around them. But they can't control an empress. They can't control an empress. And the only one who deserves to sit next to an empress is an emperor. As somebody who they treat each other like royalty. They love each other. They treat each other with respect. They're both willing to build and have an even give and take. That's who they deserve. The empress deserves the emperor and the emperor deserves the empress. And this person will never be an empress or an emperor. They won't. No, that's not who they are. And that's not who they're going to be. This like they're too far cemented in this idea of life. This is really interesting though. I will tell you this. I do feel that there is something in your future when you're ready for it. The Ace of Pentacles is a golden opportunity. The Page of Cups is an emotional offering. And I don't feel negativity about this one. Like I felt about that. That other one creeped me out. Okay, I'll be honest. That other one that said an offer with the wine glass. It creeped me out. It felt really dark. Uh, not this one. This one feels very light. This one feels very positive. I can feel happiness. I can feel friendship. I can feel an openness to this. And I can tell you it's somebody who's kind of like a hermit. It's somebody who has uh, most likely been alone for a while. But is okay and comfortable within your own skin. I keep feeling the energy that comes off of it is a quieter energy. But it has confidence. Not arrogance. But confidence. And now you sure know the difference after dealing with this last one. You know the difference between both. This is somebody who is mature. This is somebody who builds and plans for the future. This is somebody who's willing to give an even give and take. Like I said the emperor and the empress are made for each other. They're that same higher vibrational wavelength. On the knight of wands. This knight of wands is that... That immature player energy. That, that's too funny because he's also very arrogant. I got him right next to the hermit and then I got the star card, which is all about clarity. And I just finished saying, knowing the difference between confidence and arrogance. And that's exactly what the cards are saying in a three card spread. That's too funny. They are saying the clarity, knowing the difference between somebody who is comfortable and confident and somebody who's arrogant and who's showboating and who's trying to just get accolades and get noticed from others around them. A hermit's okay with people not always being like, hey, good job, good job, big pat on the batter. I want to be like you. Oh, man, that's a great shirt. Nice car. A hermit doesn't care. The hermit just wants to be happy and live a life. They just want to live their life at the things that they like, the people that they love. The hermit's a good catch. That's a very mature perspective. It's a good catch. And everything in my card says, this is part of what's coming forward in your future. It doesn't say when, so it may be some time yet. The Ace of Swords says victory. It is also the Sword of Truth. But I gotta tell you, this is, this is the thing that the universe is going to want to bring forward to you. Uh-huh. I gotta tell you, a lot of times this devil card just represents something negative in your life or a block or something that's hold, holding you back. I looked at him and it was almost like something grabbed my head and made me look at the king of swords. I know this king of swords is representing who you were dealing with. The four of wands. I gotta tell you, this person and the four of wands does not represent that, but I feel this energy in here. That's young. That's immature. That's partying, that doesn't care about, you know, future or preparing or whatever. Uh, this person's got a downward spiral coming. It's their past biting them in the ass. And then the excessive judgment by their family. I keep feeling like it just drives them into some downward spiral where they get into some shit. I mean, we did have that card that talked about using bad habits. You know, getting into partying. This person's on a spiral. They got some major bad karma coming down. They handle it very, very poorly. I got to tell you that. 
That's absolutely what's coming forward in the cards. But for you, I see a potential new future. When this karma comes down, I also see an ability to finally get the emotional closure that you need and to be able to release this piece of things so that you're free to start this new future when you're ready for it. That it is out there and it is willing to come your way and you will know the difference between someone like that devil card that you dealt with in the past and this, this arrogance and this showboating like the Knight of Wands is talking about and somebody who is mature. And somebody who is confident because there's that difference between confidence and arrogance. Alrighty guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.